read about the Yisor Lazozel, that there is a goat, two identical goats. One goat is brought Lashem as the Korban, and it's referred to as Avodos Yom Kippurim. This atones for Klal Yisrael. And there's another goat that's taken out by a designated person into the desert, thrown down a jagged mountain. It's dismembered. And this brings about the ultimate atonement for all the sins of Klal Yisrael. And until the passing of Shimon Atzadik, there was a miracle that took place every year in the Vesamigdosh during the second temple period that the crimson cloth would turn white, which is an indication of kapara, of atonement. Red is crimson, is sin. White is purity, which is atonement, kapara, forgiveness. The Ramban goes to explain it's unusual. The Torah says that you're not permitted to bring a korban outside of the Beis Hamikdash. You're not permitted. And yet, it seems to me this is a semi-type of korban, sacrifice, which is not possible. And also we know that the desert is a location of the nether forces. It's a location of desolation. Are you bringing a korban chas v'sholom to these nether forces, to these spirits? Torah says, anybody who brings a sacrifice to deities or other powers, he deserves to be to die, to be destroyed. So what exactly is this concept of the Sola Zozel, the goat that's brought and thrown down the mountainside. She goes to explain that the Yom Kippur is the day of Rachmin, the greatest day of Rachmin. We're relieved from every level of sin if we do tshuva. But yet, we have a force which is known as the Makatrik. The prosecutor of Klaus of this DeSoto. And Hashem wants to satisfy the Sultan that by appeasing him, he's not going to prosecute. So it's not a sacrifice. He is emotional. He says it's analogous that a person, a king, has a banquet. And he says, some of the crumbs of the banquet, give, give it to my slaves to satisfy them. Because the Sultan, who's the Makatrik, who's the ultimate prosecutor, he's always waiting. So by giving him those so-called crumbs, giving the Sawyer not as a sacrifice, this will silence his prosecution. And what is the location of the Sultan? All the nether forces in the Midbar, a location of total desolation. So we see something very interesting. Although the Gemara says that the numerical value of Hasotom is 364, which indicates that there's one day of the year that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not allow the Sultan to prosecute, but it's based on this process. He has to be silenced. How does Hashem silence him? With the Sarva Azazel. It's seen in the name of Ramchal that he explains, based on the Zohar, the Zohar says that when we read at the time of Max Bechorus, it says, that among the Jews, the dogs did not even bark. So the Zohar says that the bark of the dog, the Caleb, this is referring to what the prosecution of Sotom. Sotom is always trying to prosecute. And whenever Hashem wants to do anything good for us, he's always there prosecuting her. He starts barking. The bark of the dog, the dog is the Sotom. It, it represents the negative force and it starts barking, and Hashem silences the bark over. If it's Rayim, Hashem didn't even have to silence the bark. Why? Because Hashem says, it says, Anivolo Maloch, Anivolo Sorof, Anivolo Acher. Hashem's presence himself, that he came, that he took every firstborn, there wasn't even a basis for the prosecution. Sudden wouldn't dare, did not have the power to even attempt to prosecute. Throughout the year, the Kelev barks, the barking is the prosecution of the, of the Sultan. Yom Kippur, the Sultan has the ability to bark. He has that, to prosecute. But we do whatever we can based on Hashem's prescription, which does not, which silence that barking. And that's a Sultan, which is 364, which indicates that the Rachmin of Yom Kippur is so great 
that Hashem does not allow that prosecution to be heard. 